Hello, I'm Kip Williams, Artistic Director of Sydney Theatre Company and welcome to the launch of Act One of our 2022 season. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation on whose land every Sydney Theatre Company production is rehearsed, built and performed. I pay my respects to their elders past and present and I extend that respect to all First Nations people with whom we work and with whom we share stories. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Now, to say the past few months have been difficult seems like a bit of an understatement. But standing here today, launching a new season is an incredible feeling. I hope you've all kept safe and well during this latest lockdown period and that in recent weeks, life has become so much better for you all. Now, when we set the date to launch our 2022 season back in August, our theatres were dark and we were crossing our fingers we'd be reopening before the year was out. But what then was just a glimmer of hope has since become an exhilarating rush as we reopen and reconnect with each other. We've made it through the most difficult part and I'm so glad to be back here presenting a new season of plays with you all again. This evening, I'm broadcasting this launch to you live from our props workshop. It's quiet now, but during working hours, it's a wonderful hive of activity. We currently have two plays in rehearsals, Julius Caesar and Death of a Salesman and the production teams are in full flight preparing the shows. I can't wait for you all to rejoin us at the theatre in coming weeks to see these two great productions. But for now, let's turn our eyes to 2022 as we unveil Act One of next year's season. Now, in putting together the 2022 season, I wanted to assemble a collection of shows that celebrate the joy, the revelation, and the connection that only theatre can offer. Tonight, I'm joined by some very special guests to share these shows with you. I can't wait to get into it, but before we do, here's a little taste of what we have in store. So good, we have such an exciting start to next year for you. Now our first play for 2022 is Triple X by the brilliant Glace Chase. Now Triple X is potentially one of our most anticipated shows ever, having been programmed in 2020, 2021 and now in 2022. It was met with rave reviews during its Queensland theatre run earlier this year and I was so lucky to be part of the audience who leapt to its feet on opening night. This is a really special piece of Australian theatre, not only because it's the first trans love story to be performed on a main stage, but also because it's a sublime piece of new Australian writing. And I know Sydney audiences are going to be absolutely wild for it. And joining me now to tell us a little bit more about this amazing show is the prodigiously talented director of Triple X, our associate director, Paige Rattray. Hi, Paige. Hi, Kim. Thanks so much for joining me. Pleasure. Paige, tell us about this incredible play that Glace has written. What was the genesis of the narrative? Um, well, it's quite a long story now because obviously um, we've been hoping to put it on now for three years. <laughs> but it actually began, Glace and I knew each other when she was working in Sydney here. And she moved to New York. I was devastated because I'd wanted to work with her for so long because she was such a unique voice, so talented. So when I went to New York uh, five years later, I booked a ticket um, for her drag tour around Greenwich Village, uh, which ended in a long-awaited uh, catch-up at the Monster Bar, mm. um, which we drank uh, quite a few lethal frozen margaritas. <laughs> um, and during this catch-up this time, these margaritas, um, we told each other some stories about what we'd been doing the last few years. And one story in particular that Glace told me um, was particularly hilarious, and so began Triple X. So what is that story that she told you at the Monster Bar? I cannot tell you that story. That's a secret. <laughs> um, but a lot of that story is obviously in Triple X. So um, the play begins, we meet Scotty, a Wall Street banker bro. He is marrying his boss's daughter. Mm -hmm. It's the eve of his wedding. His whole family comes home. We kind of know how that goes. Uh, but through a series of flashbacks, um, we meet Dexie, a trans queen, and they fall in love 
and over the play, their love story unfolds. It's very funny. It's very moving. There's a very long sex scene. <laughs> um, it's just everything you kind of want in theatre, and I cannot wait for Sydney audiences to see it. I think it's one of the funniest sex scenes I've ever seen on stage. Thank you. Also, it is profoundly moving. You're really kind of breathless by the end of the production. Yeah. Well, we're so excited to have Triple X in the Wharf Theatre next year, in Wharf One, the first show in the new corner configuration, which exciting. is very exciting. Yeah. And Paige, having you here is also very fortuitous because you're actually directing another show in Act One of 2022. <laughs> Will you do the honours of telling us what that show is? Yes, I'm going to be directing a brand spanking new production, or, um, hopefully very hilarious production of Noel Coward's Blythe Spirit. Fabulous. Uh, and we have an absolutely ridiculous cast confirmed so far. So uh, we have Matt Day, Megan Wilding, um, Tracy Mann, Nancy Denny, and the most hilarious Bridget Zengeni. And we also have another very special cast member who has uh, recorded a little video for us, which we're going to cut to right now. Hello, Courtney Act here, and I am very excited because I am going to be playing a role uh, in a straight play. Well, it's a straight play, isn't it? It's not a musical. It's, it's not a very straight play if I'm in it. Um, but I am going to be playing Elvira, not Elvira. I know it's almost Halloween, but I'm going to be playing Elvira in Noel Coward's Blythe Spirit. Now, I wasn't familiar with the play before I got the call, but when I got asked by Sydney Theatre Company, I was just, I don't know, I felt really fancy, to be honest. And I thought, oh, it'll probably be a small little, like, comedic gender-bending role or drag role or something like that. And then I was reading the script. I was like, oh, this is the, the lead woman in the show. The comedic and glamorous Elvira. I mean, she is dead, but she's still the glamour and the comedy. And uh, I mean, I know that the other, the other two female leads might argue that they're the leads, but uh, no, I think it's quite safe to say that I'm the glamorous comedic lead. And it's starting in March uh, 2022. So make sure you get your tickets to come and see me and the wonderful cast of Noel Coward's Blythe Spirit. So good. I'm such a huge fan of Courtney's work. Paige, tell us a little bit more about Elvira Courtney's character. Yes, well, as um, we just heard, she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's the ghost um, of Charles, a writer, um, his ex-wife. And so he's looking for some new material for a new novel he's writing. And him and his new wife, Ruth, decide to have a dinner party, invite some guests and a medium to perform a seance to kind of get some material. They don't really believe in what's going on, but the medium obviously is quite good and she conjures the spirit of his uh, dead ex-wife, which is Courtney <laughs> Elvira, and she is very witty, very funny, very glamorous and very brutal. It's at a, times. It's an outrageous play, isn't it's it? It's ridiculous. We really wanted to cook up this production as a treat for Sydney following the difficult year that we've had. Audiences can come to the Opera House, laugh out loud, roll around in the aisles, really let their hair down for the first time in a long time. Yeah, absolutely. I'm kind of thinking of it as the Met Gala crossed with RuPaul, crossed with the Will and Grace, crossed with every funny thing that you've ever seen in your whole entire life. That's what we want to put on stage. It's going to be a party. Yeah, can't wait. So. Well, Paige, thanks so much for joining me. Pleasure. Well, another show that I'm so pleased to hold on to from 2021 is White Pearl by Anchuli Felicia King, directed by the great Priscilla Jackman. This is a phenomenal play by one of Australia's most exciting young playwrights and a co-production with our friends, the National Theatre of Parramatta. We first programmed this play for our 2019 season and it had a sellout season at the Riverside Theatres in Parramatta. It received such an incredible response from both critics and audiences that we knew we would have to bring it back so that more people could see it. The production went on to tour to Brisbane earlier this year and is about to open tomorrow, in fact, as part of Asia Festival in Adelaide. This play is so sharp, so topical and so funny, a really impressive work from a brilliant Australian playwright. We were very lucky to have Felicia as our Patrick White's Playwrights Fellow last year and it's really exciting to bring this work to Wharf One. Now here is a short video for you from Felicia herself to tell you about this extraordinary play. Hi, my name is Anjali Felicia King and I am the playwright of White Pearl. I am so excited that White Pearl is going to be coming back to STC and being staged in Wharf One. Um, 
you know, this play has been uh, in hibernation for a while. We had uh, incredible responses to the production we did way back in 2019 uh, in the before times. So I'm just really excited for Sydney audiences to get to see this incredible ensemble of fierce, badass Asian actors that we put together for this play um, finally tread the boards at STC. I think it's going to be a really celebratory moment for all of us. Um, I really hope that you'll come and see it. Uh, if you didn't see the original production, um, you can expect to see a sharp, a very dark black comedy set in a office in Singapore um, that explores whitening cream and online cancel culture. Um, and it really uses whitening cream as a lightning rod to explore a bunch of different themes like uh, beauty standards and uh, intra-Asian racism and the legacy of colonialism and anti-black racism in Asia. Um, so it's a very meaty play, but it's also a very uh, riotously funny night in the theater. So I really hope you'll join us in 2022. See you there. Bye. It's such a cracking show. Don't miss that one. Now, one of everyone's favourite theatre moments this year has to have been resident director Jessica Arthur's superb and very, very funny production of Best Falls Grand Horizons at the Roslyn Packer Theatre. I'm so pleased to announce that this production will have a reprise limited run in February 2022. Audiences were being enthralled by this intergenerational comedy when the tail end of the season was unfortunately cut short by the lockdown. Now, everyone who missed out last time and anyone who wants to see it again can experience this warm and deeply funny look at family life. And I have the brilliant Jess here with me today to tell us a bit more about this terrific production. Hi, Jess. Hey, Kip. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Uh, Jess, why do you think it is that Grand Horizons has resonated with so many people? I think there's something in it for everybody. And that was a common thing we heard from audiences after they saw it. It's, bec it's because it's about like a very uh, tight family unit who have a lot of things going on and people left kind of saying I, I, I was that person within my family or that happened to my parents uh, and Bess's writing is so beautiful it's really intimate but at the same time it is so hilarious and it really whacks you with these unexpected moments and I think that's what a lot of people loved about it. There's such an incredible cast that you put together for the original season. Which of the cast have you got coming back for 2022? I'm very excited to say most are coming back. Good. We've got the fantastic Linda Cropper and John Bell leading the family. Their kids are Johnny Nasser and Guy Simon. We've got the wonderful Vanessa Downing coming back. And joining us is Mansu Anua. Oh, Mansu is such a phenomenal performer. We're very lucky to have him joining the cast. We are. And... You've got a show coming back next year, I hear. I do. Nice would you, segue, Jess. <laughs> would you like to tell us about that? Why not? <laughs> I'm thrilled to announce that the picture of Dorian Gray will also be returning in 2022. And if I can just say, writing and directing this production has been one of the great highlights of my career. Of course, working with EJ, who's been a long-time collaborator of mine, both as a performer, but also mm. she serves as dramaturg and creative associate on this production. And working with her and the incredible creative team, as you know, on this show, yeah. Mark Horwell, the set designer, Nick Schlieper, the lighting designer, Clements Williams, the composer, Dave Bergman, the video designer. It was a, really a team effort to build this huge production. And I'm so thrilled that more people are going to be able to get to see it. Yeah. And I'm echoing you there. EJ's performance was phenomenal. What does that, what in, does she have to do? Like, what did that entail? Look, I, I even watch it myself and I'm a bit blown away by what she does and I know what she's doing yeah. at any, any given moment. She has to perform 26 characters. She does a two-hour monologue, essentially, of a Victorian novel um, whilst playing against various versions of herself that are pre-recorded. And once we press go on those pre-records, there's no budge in the timing. She has to nail it perfectly every night and she does. She sticks it. And how do you even rehearse something like that? Well, it was kind of like climbing an Everest of sorts, really, because the, the production is sort of like a combination between a film and a play. So we're kind of like shooting a feature whilst also rehearsing a play, but in the amount of time that it takes to rehearse a play. So we had our work cut out for us, but it was the first show back that I made after lockdown that many of us were making last year after lockdown. So we had this passion and this fire mm. and this excitement for it that really kept us going. I cannot wait to see it again, and I'm so glad that more people get to see it. Thank you, Jess. Well, I'm excited to see Grand Horizons, and thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. Well, finally, we have a special offer to complete our 2022 Act One season. 
you may have seen the announcement last week that we are incredibly pleased to co-produce a brand new work with Bangara Dance Theatre and Sydney Festival. And that work is Wujang, Not the Past. Bangara consistently makes some of the most remarkable dance work in the world. I'm personally always enthralled by their work and must say I was absolutely blown away when I saw their landmark production of Benelong a few years back. Such a breathtaking piece. I'm so very excited that the same team behind Benelong, led by Bangara's phenomenal artistic director, Stephen Page, are bringing this work to us. And now, here's a message from Stephen himself to tell you a little bit more about the show. Hello, my name is Stephen Page, the artistic director of Bangara Dance Theatre. Today I share with you some exciting news about a new production called Woodjung, Not the Past. Bangara Dance Theatre, along with Sydney Theatre Company, hosted by Sydney Festival, will bring to you in January this beautiful work, a personal work, actually. It's very personal to me. It's stories that have been inspired from my father's country, the Yugambeh Nation in southeast Queensland, freshwater country. Wujang means mother, the spirit of mother that's in the land that we stand on. And it's been a huge inspiration of the telling of the story. Alana Valentine, playwright, myself, composer Steve Francis, some of my good old creative clan, we've come together because we wanted to tell a story that went beyond uh, the Bangara dance form and that was using other multifacets of artistic mediums. So in this new work, five singer actors, four musicians, plus 17 of some of our amazing First Nation artists and dancers, all coming together to tell a story that is full of current issues today, First Nation current issues today, dealing with the significance of land, the respect for knowledge, the passing on of knowledge to generation to generation, about how we are dealing with those issues in this 21st century. Jacob Nash is doing the set design and it's just going to be epic. Uh, we've been having some wonderful conversations about what is the space that the story of all these medium and forms sit in? Uh, it's probably going to be different to some of our Bangara dance productions. I, I think it's a, another level because of coming together uh, with all these forms and bringing to you this sort of feels like this old, but this new, fresh take on uh, what I would call a contemporary ceremony. And that's Wujang, not the past. Promised to be an astounding, beautiful and urgent work. Well, that wraps up our Act One of 2022. Five incredible productions, plus really a very special offer in Wujang. Now, season tickets for Act One will be a package of two or more plays with the option of adding on Wujang. As always, renewing season ticket holders get priority access to the season and season tickets go on sale to everyone else on the 16th of November. We'd love to see you join us as a season ticket holder in 2022. In closing, I would like to say some big thank yous. I want to start by thanking our artists and our theatre professionals. Without you, we would have no work on our stages and I'm so excited to be back making theatre with you all. I also want to thank and acknowledge the hard work and dedication of all of STC's staff. And of course, we are back here at the wharf, building sets, creating costumes, rehearsing shows, just after lockdown is lifted because of our wonderful donor community. Thank you to all of you who have donated the cost of your ticket or who have made a significant contribution to our work. There are so many of you. Your love of our theatre has shone through with an outpouring of support and your collective impact cannot be overstated. I can stand here and look to the year ahead, buoyed by the knowledge that our donor family is always ready to come together to keep our company strong. Now, one group who deserve a very special mention are our angel donors, who have led the way, showing philanthropic leadership and unwavering support that has secured a brighter future for STC. Thank you for your upfront commitment to our productions, to our artists, and to our company. I'd also like to say thank you to the STC board and to the foundation directors for your guidance, support, and leadership during this difficult period. And of course, thank you to our government partners, the federal government through the Australia Council, and the New South Wales government through Create New South Wales. Their increased funding throughout the pandemic has been incredibly generous. 
They have shown understanding of what is required to bring back theatre, and we deeply value this opportunity to work more closely with them. And thank you also to our generous corporate partners. We really appreciate your ongoing commitment as we plan for 2022 and beyond. And of course, thanks to all of you. Thanks for joining me today. I'm so excited to be back on stage and launching a new season. Let's get together for some theatre, and I'll see you in a foyer soon.